Hey everyone, welcome back to Structure Pro. Just wanted to quickly clarify, to you guys, you guys are the Structure Pros, okay, not me. At least you're becoming as so, if you're watching these videos. But don't think that it's me calling myself a Structure Pro, because that ain't true. I'm like a Structure Novice, and if you watch these videos, you're the Structure Pro, okay, that's how it works. Anyway, so here's an example that we have. Uh, it's from this Mechanics of Materials textbook that I'm using every so often. And we're just asked to find all the values of sigma y for which tau max is 80 MPa. And we're going to use the 3D Morse circle for this, okay? So note that we don't even really have the case of plane stress here, right? Because they're out of, plane, out of plane stress, yeah, sigma y is not zero. It's going to be some value, probably. So, what are we given? We're given that sigma x is 90 MPa, sigma z is 0 MPa, we can see there's no normal stress in the z direction, and the shear stress on the xz plane, tau xz, is 60 MPa. So we're going to analyze the Mohr circle for stresses in the xz plane. So that's the first thing we're going to do, because we have all these three pieces of information. So using these equations down below, we can find the rest. Don't worry about the x, y subscripts. They can be used for x, z. So sigma average is very easy to compute because sigma z is 0. 90 over 2 is 45 MPa. R is half the distance between the normal stresses squared plus our shear stress squared, all square rooted. So 45 squared plus 60 squared, which equals 75 MPa. Just pause if we're going too quick and look over things. Good idea to have a scrap paper and do these things yourself for deeper learning. So therefore, since we have sigma average and r, we can say that for the xz plane, sigma max is the 45 plus 75, or 120 MPa, and sigma min is the 45 minus 75. So in this case, that's negative 30 MPa. So we've fully analyzed this xz plane and we found the principal stresses on it. And we note that the r equal to 75 is also our tau max for the xz plane. But we're cautious now, we know that that might not be the tau max overall. Because we don't, we don't know what sigma y is, okay? So we want tau max to be 80 MPa. Therefore we need a larger circle than this more circle for the xz plane because that only has a radius of 75. Our circle is going to have a radius of 80 MPa. So now it's time to solve for this sigma y. So let's think through this. Our sigma max was 120 MPa. But let's just call that sigma a, alright? And our sigma b was negative 30 MPa. So the reason we're changing these from sigma max to sigma min to sigma a and sigma b is that we don't know the value of sigma y and it could be greater than sigma max or less than sigma min. So we actually don't know the maximum and minimum and we might need to change these things around because remember we get to choose what sigma y is. So let's set sigma a equal to sigma max. In doing so we're, we're just guaranteeing that sigma y is going to be less than that. Then we can compute the minimum value that we need for sigma y to be. So sigma min is sigma max minus 2r, and that's that r that we want, that 80 MPa. So 120 minus 2 times 80, the diameter of the circle, is negative 40 MPa. We can do the same thing by setting sigma b is equal to sigma min, and then solve for our sigma max. So it's going to be our minimum plus 2 of our radius, or the diameter and that equals our negative 30 plus 2 times 80. So negative 30 plus 160 is 130 MPa. So we solved for our two values of sigma y, so we're done. The end of this problem kind of crept up on us. Now it is a good learning opportunity to actually look at the 3D Morse circles that we got going on here. So let's do that here. So first, on the left, we have the sigma a equal to sigma max. That was our first decision to solve for sigma y. And note here our initial state, that line across, and that line is going across the xz plane circle. Remember, that's the one that we solved for first. 
So we had our 9060 face and our 060 face. Up top, our tau max, that's represented by that 80, that value 80 up there. The, it's the radius of the circle. It's the tau max of the biggest circle we have. You could also label our sigma min on the left side, that negative 40, 0. And yeah, you can try it out yourself. Maybe draw the other one, the up, one in the upper right-hand corner, and try and identify the different circles and which planes they represent, okay? We have, I'll, I'll label them here for this one. Now there is one mistake of one of these points that is labeled. First one to comment the mistake is the winner. And yeah, I just drawn this circle on the upper right, the sigma b is equal to sigma min circle. You can try drawing that out yourself if you want. Essentially, we chose to have our bigger circle match up on the left side rather than on the right side of our, of our smaller xz plane circle that we drew first. So on the left, the sigma y that we solved for was compressive, and this upper right, the sigma y is tensile. One thing to clarify, how did we know that sigma y was going to be on the sigma axis, right on the axis? Well, it was because there was no shear stress on that face. So sigma y we knew was a principal stress. So that's it for this example. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you later.